I'd like to start my talk by playing a game with you. I'm going to show you three facts at a time, and I want you to name the common thread that unites them. First one, the blurted out wins. Odell Beckham Jr.'s one-handed catch, Pele's hand of God goal, Willie Mays' the catch against the New York Giants in 1954. Good job, it was indeed sports. Next, Russia invades Ukraine, US Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade, Trump is indicted with 34 felonies. Oh, did someone say current events? Great job. Now, a quote about, by Michael Bloomberg about our duty to promote the common good, the fact that Pfizer added tromethanine to its COVID vaccine for children, and that the velocity of an electron is 1.35 times 10 to the 6 meters per second under these conditions. Hopefully I'm wrong, but I suspect that many of you had trouble finding the connection here. And that makes sense. The similarity here was that all three statements are false pieces of information generated by the new large language model that we all know and love, ChatGBT. Let's be honest here. None of us, not even the experts, really know what GPT is capable of. We all live in a world filled with AI. Our credit cards store all of our purchasing history. We have phones that store all possible data about us and our internet activity, and even personal assistants like Alexa that hear and save all conversations we've ever had in our own homes. It's scary how much AI knows about us, but what's even more concerning is how little we actually know about it. In fact, in many ways, the best thing that came out of GPT is its catalysis of more societal conversations questioning AI and its role in our world. Now, what makes GPT and similar systems that are building up different than the AI we're accustomed to? There are so many answers, but in my opinion, it is its ability to deductively reason, at least to an extent, and their thinking abilities will only get better. They can create text, images, video, audio, and other forms of media on the spot. In short, they are generative. In ChatGPT's case, the training data it draws from includes the entire World Wide Web, which, as you can imagine, means that ChatGPT poses an extreme threat towards the dissemination of misinformation. To the point that Gordon Krovitz, co-CEO of the misinformation detection company NewsGuard, thinks that ChatGPT is going to be the most powerful tool for spreading misinformation that has ever been on the internet. In fact, natural language processing systems are already being used by 60% of AP students worldwide, are helping a popular drug cartel in New Mexico create a dangerous nuclear bomb, and have even hacked into the Pentagon website by decrypting its deepest security algorithms with its coding capabilities. Okay, all three of those were false statements, luckily, chips of misinformation. But if I'm putting them on the internet and a few other people share my post or say something similar, you can see how problematic using the all-encompassing World Wide Web is for a generative AI system. In the past, with Google, YouTube, or Khan Academy, real human producers would be behind each article, video, or image. And the consumer would absorb the information, have to understand it, and then apply this knowledge to solve their own problem, or what have you. Now, a quick search on this popular natural language processor can do the job, but without necessarily doing anything of the sort in its lifetime, and thus its output comes with a great deal of errors. Now, here's where it gets cool, and possibly where the misinformation can get mitigated. This past March, Morgan Stanley adopted GPT-4 software to create personalized recommendations for their clients based on intra-firm training data. Basically, since GPT can't do its own thinking per se, and just summarizes others' thinking from the internet, Morgan Stanley modified it to use training data only written by Morgan Stanley employees. This opens up another interesting can of worms, because Morgan Stanley's articles are inherently biased. All the writers are rich, well-off financial advisors, and primarily white males from the upper middle class. Shifting over to the educational field, since we've been hearing so much about its AI's threat to it, Many institutions have already banned ChatGPT on school grounds, including my own high school. And to a certain extent, I feel the teacher's plight. If students are having entire essays written by ChatGPT and problem sets solved by AI, the deep thinking that education is meant to develop is entirely lost. But AI has a much grander and more promising outlet in this regard, and it definitely has its ways to enhance student learning, not hinder it. For instance, Sal Khan, the founder of Khan Academy, is currently developing a new tool called Conmigo, which uses the GPT-4 software to create an AI bot that acts as a personalized tutor. In a world filled with large lecture halls, confusing textbooks, and limited opportunities for one-on-one -on -one support from teachers, we'll be able to ask questions from AI in real time to help redirect us. This can benefit everyone, especially the disadvantaged, 
who can't afford independent human tutors to handhold them through their classes. How cool is that? But students, we have to use it responsibly too. Let's not lose our privileges or the sight of our end goal of our education. To become deeper thinkers and to learn. One popular metaphor that I think is very effectively represents where the line gets drawn is when our use of AI is comparable to that of a calculator. If we understand what the AI is doing and can recognize when it makes an error, we can and should use it to perform tasks faster. However, given its history of creating misinformation and other false answers, we can't yet trust it to do the entire process of coming to a conclusion without checking over it. This could be especially problematic when learning about a field for the first time, because if we don't fully grasp the building blocks of whatever lear we're learning, when we get to the later stages, we'll never be able to build anything meaningful. But when all is said and all is done, it all boils down to one essential question that lays at the foundation of everything we're doing with AI, but yet we all overlook. What do we really want AI to do? And what role should it play in the quest of advancing humankind? A famous Chinese proverb translates to, do not ever ask if you can do something. Ask first if you should do it, for truly anything is possible. Okay, that isn't a Chinese proverb, I just made that up, but it's true, and especially pertinent to our involvement in the AI revolution. Every day, we read news of new AI developments, but at the forefront of all this, we should be actively questioning whether or not we should be using it. Sure, there's no doubt it's cool that AI can pass the bar exam with flying colors, generate images of non-existent birds using training data of birds that already exist, and even write essays in TED Talks like this one. Kidding, AI didn't write this talk, but it very well could have. In fact, I was inches away from having AI write my talk, but a conversation with a teacher of mine at school persuaded me not to. It was all written. I spent maybe 30 minutes playing around with prompt engineering, my wording, and sewing it up all together. But those aren't my thoughts about AI. They're AI's thoughts about AI, which are very different, and the distinction should be there. There are certainly many things that we want AI to automate, but there are also a handful of things we don't, which is up to all of you to decide. As I leave you with my talk, if there's one thing I want you to get out of it, is to be more skeptical of AI, both with regard to misinformation and its ethics of usage in your life. If you want to go a step further, you can think about signing open letters like that that Steve Wozniak and Elon Musk are endorsing to take a break to establish a palpable AI ethics code before continuing development. Or maybe you just share this talk with a friend who can't stop writing his essays with ChatGPT. But at the bare minimum, continue having conversations about AI, embrace the skeptic mindset, and don't have AI write the TED talk. Thank you.